Hi, we are discussing ESC prelims 2019 key and explanation. Let us see the next question. When jury scrubber, a device used to remove particulate matter from the atmosphere works on the principle of. So we know that what is a scrubber? We know that what is a venturi device? So we can easily answer this question. What is a scrubber? What is a scrubber is a device which is used to remove the pollutant, particulate matter or gases. It can remove both particulate matter or gases from the exhaust. It can work in different ways. It can be a chemical absorption. It can be an electrostatic precipitation. So different ways are there. And Venturi device we know it will look like this. There will be a small cross-sectional area region called throat. When a fluid flow is constricted, its velocity increases. So velo using this property of increasing velocity, we atomize the liquid. What is mean by atomize? Atomize nothing but divide. Divide into small droplets. So this is the liquid we are using as the scrubber. So this liquid will be having chemical or physical properties to absorb the gases and particulate matter from the inlet. So this liquid is passed to the throat and its velocity increases and it will get divided and the particulate matter will get absorbed in this droplets. So if we are using water or vapor, it will convert into small vapor droplets. And when this velocity is decreasing, these particles will get settled down. We can use a different methods here also for settling down the droplets. So here we are using the atomized liquid that provides an enormous number of tiny droplets for dust particles to impact on. Now what could be the answer? The answer is removal by atomized water vapor. So if you don't know the exact working of the Venturi scrubber also, we can answer this question. Because uh, we know the basis. Venturi scrubber is not working by gravitational force. It is not by centrifugal force. Centrifugal force in, involves rotation. And that is not by electrically charged particles. We need electrostatic force here. So the only option we are left with is D. Removal by atomized water vapor. Now let us go to the next question. Acid rain results when gaseous emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxides interact with water vapor and. So this is about the formation of the acid rain. Two components are here. The oxides, sulfur and nitrogen and water vapor and what else is required. So from the options, what are the components? Moonlight, sunlight, chemical conversion, strong acids, weak acids. Other, other things are same in all the options. Sulfuric acid and nitric acid and chemical conversion is in all options. So here we have to decide between these factors. How acid rain is formed? The oxides react with vapor, water vapor to form acids. So what are the strong acids? Strong acids are sulfur dioxide, hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. These three are the strong acids. So these three are the main components of the acid rain. Even though we have other pollutants like carbon dioxide in the air, which can also form acid called carbonic acid, this won't form the component of the acid rain because it is a weak acid. Then what is the significance of the sunlight here? Sunlight here gives the oxidizing agents. Or from other oxygen compounds also, oxygen radicals will be produced which are strong oxidizing agents which will help in the reaction. So these are the photochemical reactions which requires the presence of sunlight. Let's say 
it is the sunlight also essential for the formation of acid rain and the water vapor gives sir uh, dissolves this acids these strong acids easily dissolve in water thus they form the acid rain so now from the question what is the most appropriate option it is not moonlight sunlight is required they are strong acid so sunlight are chemically converted to strong acidic compounds such as sulfuric acid and nitric acid this is the answer the minamata tragedy was caused by eating fish growing in the minamata bay contaminated with so this is an easy question because when we are studying the environmental pollution we cannot miss this topic this tragedy happened in japan and after this tragedy there are uh, occurred an international convention also called minamata convention on reduction of mercury usage and prevention of mercury contamination so it is that mercury poisoning so this mercury is methyl mercury which is an organic compound which will bio accumulate and bio magnify so the fish in that bay which was contaminated with effluents from the nearby industries was having this mercury compounds so when people consumed that fish they got mercury poisoning so the answer is clear it is methyl mercury vision of the following is a terrestrial type of ecosystem so we have seen different type biomes and ecosystems by and last year also there was a question on this topic so this year also there is one question this is asking which is the terrestrial type terrestrial means which is found on the land surface found on the land not on water so my options what is limnetic limnetic is the ecosystem found away from the land in the middle of the water body like open sea ecosystem estuary is the meeting point of river and the sea what is prairie prairie is a grassland grassland it is essentially a temperate grassland found in temperate regions of north america so this temperate grasslands are known in different names according to the location where they are found like steppe is prairie is different grasslands are different names are there for the temperate grasslands this so this is a terrestrial ecosystem and reef you know they are denoting the coral reef it is a aquatic ecosystem so prairie so is the answer next question ozone layer present in the atmosphere protects the life on earth by not per permitting harmful radiations present in the sunlight to penetrate through it ozone layer is formed by the reaction of so this is simply a description don't get confused or don't spend much time on this sentence the actual question is ozone layer is formed by the reaction of we have seen the formation and destruction of the ozone layer it is a reversible process oxygen and oxygen radicals will form ozone and the reverse will also happen in the presence of sunlight in the process the ultraviolet rays are absorbed since the ultraviolet rays are getting consumed in the stratosphere itself we are protected from the from this harmful radiations so this process and uh, happens continuously in the stratosphere so what is the answer solar ultraviolet rays on oxygen will help in the formation of the ozone so in this question you have to be careful because there is a chance that you can go wrong even though you know the answer because you will see the chlor chlorofluorocarbons chlorine chlorine nitrate and in a hurry or in the tension you will overlook seeing the chlorofluorocarbons you may go to them to take this answer chlorine nitrate also you will them to take the answer but here it is asking the formation of the ozone right so chlorine nitrate and chlorofluorocarbons and chlorine will provide the chlorine radicals this chlorine nitrate is the storehouse of the radical chlorine radicals in the atmosphere this chlorine radicals will react with the ozone and convert them back to oxygen 
so it will accelerate the reverse reaction that means it destructs the ozone layer not in the formation of the ozone layer so be careful in answering such question answer is c